it's Vicki and I am here today to do my five year book to birthday Q&A for you. So you guys asked me questions, I have answers. Let's get into it. Okay, so the first question is, did you have any particular person in your life when you were younger that got you into reading or anyone who had an influence on your reading? And absolutely, both of my parents were avid readers when I was a kid. Uh, my dad, especially now, he still reads quite a bit. My mom, not so much because she her eyes bother her. So she has trouble reading. But my dad, we still, like, every time I see him, I'm like, so what book are you reading? And like vice versa. So yeah, he was definitely the one who, um, read to me a lot as a kid, but both my parents were always reading, so that's probably where I get it from. Okay, the next question, has there been a book that you felt like never reading, but because you kept seeing it on Bookstagram or Booktube, you picked it up? Absolutely, there, there's been quite a few. Um, oh, but then the second part of the question is, what was your experience? Were you right or did Booktube make you love it? Well, let me go grab the one that's popping in my head because that's the one I'm gonna talk about. So if it wasn't for booktube, I probably would have never read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, but I heard so many people just, just raving about this book, loving this book, that I finally picked it up in like, I think it was 2019 or so, so I was a little late to the party, but this was a five-star read, I loved it. <laughs> so booktube was absolutely right, they convinced me, and they were right. This was a great book, I loved it. The next question is, do you ever find yourself in a reading slump? If so, what is your recommendation to get out of one? I was actually just last week feeling a little slumpy um, after, this past week I should say, after the um, booklist backlist readathon. Usually with readathons, because I'm pushing myself to read so much, I usually do get a little slumpy like <laughs> afterwards. Uh, and basically to deal with a slump, I kind of, I tend to just let it ride. Like if I don't feel like reading, I just do something else and um, usually it only lasts like a couple days and then I'm right back to wanting to read all the time but I don't think I've ever been slumpy to the point where I went like months without wanting to pick up a book or anything like that but I think if I did I would probably just read really short things, um, graphic novels or books that you've read before that you know you really liked. I think that's a great way to get out of it too. But otherwise I say just, if it's not lasting a really long time, just let it ride. The next question is, would you survive the zombie apocalypse? No, no, I would not. <laughs> I can't run fast. Uh, I, my survival skills, like, I don't think they're there. I really don't. Um, yeah, I wouldn't last long at all. <laughs> If you had to choose a genre that would be the only type of book you read, you could read going forward, what would you choose? Uh, I would probably say horror, only because I just, I just love being scared. Like, there's something that's fun and also oddly comforting to me about <laughs> that scary feeling and just the, ooh. Uh, same thing goes for like movies and stuff. I, I could rewatch horror movies over and over uh, because it's just, I think it's fun. It's very like immersive and also it's just like it's a lot of times a lot of the horror that I read because I tend to like the supernatural stuff is so just not real life that um, I can kind of escape into it a little bit. Okay, the next question is my question is <laughs> what is the biggest lesson you've learned on your time on booktube? What would you tell someone just starting out? Um, for me, the biggest thing is I would say to just do you, like make the type of videos you want to make. Don't feel like you have to make uh, certain types of videos because they are here on booktube. Like if you don't like vlogging, don't vlog. If you don't like making TBR videos or doing TBRs, then don't. Uh, if you just want to do tag videos all the time, then do tag videos. Like do whatever you want to do because, because that's where the joy comes from. If you're doing stuff that you're not really enjoying just because you think it's gonna get you noticed, then you're not gonna be happy, so what's the point, right? So yeah, I would say just do what you wanna do. And as ter in terms of like the first part, um, a big lesson learned, or what would I tell someone just starting out, is I would say first of all, just do it. Just, just, just dive in and do it. Um, and one thing that I didn't do that I wish I had done was I wish I had done the booktube newbie tag because I don't know, I think I 
it's just a great opportunity to like introduce yourself to the community and even I find myself five years later, I still search that on YouTube, like booktube newbie tag to try to find new booktubers. And so it's a great way to just like meet people quicker. <laughs> um, so yeah, I would say make that like your first video if you can. And uh, yeah, that's it, have fun. Okay, so this is kind of a, like a longer question, but we're gonna go with it. Um, she says, okay, you stated you came on here looking for book readers, true. What made you decide to reach out to them to communicate and become friends? How did you go about that without feeling like a stalker? And do people send you messages to try to become friends? How do you trust that they are on the up and up? Um, for me, like the way that I first kind of connected with people was through their videos. So I would comment on their videos and then you kind of get to chatting, um, especially if you keep, you know, you watch the, the same people regularly and you comment regularly you do kind of feel like and they respond you do kind of feel like you get to know them and that's how it started with a lot of the like friends that i have here on booktube um and then it kind of from there it kind of was like oh let's do a buddy read together and then kind of like when you're buddy reading you're checking in with each other a lot more kind of on the side like you know privately messaging each other so you kind of tend to talk more about like your day and what's going on in your life and so you just get to know them better. So it doesn't, to me, it didn't feel stalkerish at all. And you know, I've had subscribers, um, you know, ask to do a buddy read with me and I'm, I'm pretty much always open to do that. Um, and it didn't seem, it didn't seem creepy to me at all <laughs> because I feel like that's why we're all here. Uh, and I've never had that vibe from any of the people that I have like talk to or become friends with it, that they were that they were being like weird okay the next question was one that was already asked um if you were told you could only read one genre of a book from now on what would you pick and i would pick horror okay the next question is what is the biggest challenge concerning your channel that you have overcome in the past five years uh for me um especially in the beginning because i I think I mentioned when I did the announcement for this video, I was recently a stay at home, had recently become a stay at home parent. And I had it, so I had a two and a half year old and I was pregnant with my son. And so that was an adjustment in itself. And so in the beginning, um, I sometimes struggled with uh, filming and stuff. Um, and I was, I think I was doing like one video a week because that was like what I could manage and I would do it like while my daughter was napping and stuff like that. And then it has kind of evolved where now it's like I'm in a rhythm. But I think it was just kind of like finding the time. And then also in that in the beginning, uh, there were times because I was in like just the throes of like newborn baby and stuff. Um, I wasn't reading as much or whatever. And when you're not reading as much, you you know, that is like directly related to your content. <laughs> so if you're not reading anything, it's hard to create content. So that was a little bit. but. Now it's like I'm in a groove and I can kind of plan out what I'm going to do and in some cases plan out like what I'm going to read based on videos I want to make and stuff like that. So I think I guess it's just in the as a whole, it's just about planning it out and kind of even like having a calendar and writing it down or something like that is very helpful. OK, the next question is what book character do you think you are most like? And this is hard because I have a hard time like describing myself <laughs> um, or thinking about myself in that way. Uh, I'm introverted for sure, and so I think I'm a little bit like Charlie from The Perks of Being a Wallflower in the sense that, yeah, I am not the life of the party. Like when I go to things and stuff like that, I am more of, I like to have like small groups of people that I connect with and just sort of observe everything going on than being like an active participant a lot of times. Uh, so I'm a, like, I'm a little quiet, but then, but then when, it, when you get to know me, I'm a little bit, I can get a little bit more talkative, outgoing, crazy, whatever. Uh, and then I, <laughs> I want to say in, in the sense that I'm a little bit like Joe from Little Women, but in reality, I'm probably a little more like Beth. <laughs> just quiet, reserved, until you get to know me. So it's hard. I would say more so I am more on the quiet side. Hold the book backwards. I'm more on the quiet side. Okay, the next one is, if there's only one popular genre, subgenre, or trope that you would love to read for the rest of your life, which one would you pick and why? Okay, I've already said horror. I definitely will probably stick with that and say 
the trope I love the most is coming of age horror. And bonus points if it's a small friend group and they're fighting a monster or an evil of some sort. That story, you, you tell me that that's the synopsis, I'm gonna read that book. <laughs> and I could continue to read them over and over. I just love them because I love coming of age books um, and just the supernatural stuff thrown in. Uh, the intimate friend groups, because that's me. I, that's how, I have a, like a small circle of friends. Um, so yeah, all of it is just like the best for me. <laughs> okay, next question. Uh, and it is based on the Pages & Co. series by Anna James, which I have never read, but I want to because it has a really cool concept. <laughs> in that series, the main character, Tilly, has the ability to travel into her favorite books. What is the first book that comes to mind that you would want to travel into, and what is the first book that comes to mind you'd never want to find yourself in? Well, I know the one I would never want to find myself in, for sure, is Christmas Land. No way. No way am I going to Christ Christmas Land. And as for like a book where I would want to go, I like magical worlds and stuff like that, but I don't want it to be too crazy. Um, so I would like something where it's, it's our world, it's, you know, we have all of the things that we have here, but there's a little bit of magic and it's blended into our world. Everything coexists. It's not like hidden, like in the Harry Potter series, for example. So I would say something like a lots away where you have magic, people have magical abilities and stuff like that, but it's like well known, like, and everyone is just like cool with it. It's just cool and that's just the way things are. That's probably the kind of world I would want to step into. The next question is what is the best horror book I've ever read? Is anyone surprised? The next question is what was your career like prior to starting a family in booktube? So back when I first like graduated college, I worked at a radio station. I was like a like a content writer, I guess you could say. Uh, I didn't like go on the air or anything like that. And unfortunately when the recession hit in like 2009, 2000, yeah, like it was like 2009, um, my entire like department was basically eliminated and I was laid off. And then I never could get another job in my field. Um, it was a struggle. So I, before, up until I became a stay at home parent, I was working for a retail company uh, where for a while I was a pricing and signage coordinator. And um, when I had my daughter, when she was about one and a half or so, I wanted to kind of step down and do more of a part time gig because I just didn't want to work as much. I wanted more time with my daughter. And so I was an administrative assistant up until I left to be a stay-at-home parent. Okay, the next question is, what is the one book I wish I had written? Boy's Life. This book was so good. And just, oh, I loved the blending. Like I kind of talked about with um, wanting to be in a world like a lots of way. I loved the blending of like the magical realism stuff and the like real life stuff. And I loved the Time period, 1960s America. Um, this is a coming of age book with horror elements. Um, and it was just so well done. And there's, in particular, there's a scene in here. It's the last day of school for our main character. I think his name was Corey, right? Yes, Corey McKenzie. Um, in the scene where him and his friends like kind of bust out of the school building for the summer, the, the way that scene in particular was done Still, like, I still remember it. It still sticks with me. I absolutely loved it. It was beautiful. This book is beautiful. Okay, the next question is, have you ever read Ghost Story by Peter Straub? It's set in 1975. It gives me Stephen King vibes. I think you would like it. This is so strange that you're asking me this question because I went to the bookstore a week or two ago, popped in, was just browsing because my, my daughter was at a birthday party and I was just kind of killing time. Um, and... I picked up Ghost Story <laughs> because it was a special value price. I got it for $10. And I this has been on my TBR for a while. I've always wanted to read it. I've never read a, a standalone, like a Peter Straw book that's just by him. I read The Talisman that he wrote with Stephen King and really, really liked that book. So that's so odd and kind of awesome that you asked me that question because yeah, I just, I just bought this. The next question is, what is the most memorable book I've ever read? And for that, I'm gonna go with a classic. That is To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. 
um, because these characters just, I've read this book twice. I read it in high school, like required reading, and I actually like really loved it. <laughs> and I read it again, I'd say probably in the last 10 years or so. And uh, it still just has stuck with me. The characters, um, the relationships, um, obviously like the social commentary, just all of it, just the vibe, the like, 1960s small town southern vibes were just so good and this is one that I probably I honestly I feel like I'm due for a reread of this it's been a while like I said I think I've last read it probably like 10 years ago but yeah this is this is one that I really really loved okay the next question is what is one book that you wish you had never read just so you could have the joy of reading it again for the first time I'm gonna say The Elementals by Michael McDowell uh, because this book was like really surprising. It was one I had never heard of until booktube. So that would be a good one for that question as well. I read this because of booktube and I loved this book so much. Um, <laughs> I loved the, the atmosphere. I loved the characters specifically. There's a mother, um, not mother, a father-daughter relationship in here that I know some people didn't like I thought it was great. I loved it. I loved their banter. It was great. Um, yeah, and I just, I remember this book isn't very long. It's only like, yeah, like 200 pages. It, I, I took such a long time to read it because like I didn't want it to end. And that's how you know it's a really good book when you purposefully take your time and slow down because you don't want it to stop, right? And that's what this book was for me. The next question is, what is a favorite band or music artist you recently discovered? <laughs> I'm really gonna age myself here and say I'm at that time in my life where I'm not really finding new music. <laughs> I'm reverting back to the music of my youth and revisiting that and listening to that a lot, especially lately. Um, so a lot of like 90s rock, like 90s like hard rock, even 90s pop, because it is was still a part of my childhood. Really like all music from that era, I, other than country. I, I don't like country music. That is like the one genre, like I cannot, I cannot do it. I just can't do it. Um, but yeah, <laughs> that's like where I am. I, I don't seek out new music. I probably should. But other than like bands that I have been listening to for 20, 30 years coming out with new stuff, unless that counts, I haven't really been seeking out stuff. <laughs> I just like to stick stick with the, the, the old stuff, the oldies. Next question, have you always lived in Michigan? Yes, I'm a Michigander, born and raised. Okay, are there any books you've reread years after first picking up where you felt totally different about it the second time around? Either you loved it the first time, really disliked it on the reread, or vice versa. Yes, <laughs> and this is pretty recently. When I was a teenager, maybe even like late middle school, high school, I was obsessed with Anne Rice and the Vampire Chronicles and would like tell people that, you know, she was one of my favorite authors, That's what, those were like my favorite books. And so last year, um, actually Bobby and I, for our book club, we decided to reread, both of us, we wanted to reread Interview the Vampire for our book club. And when I reread this, I was very underwhelmed. And it, I gave it three stars. I, I was kind of bored by it. Um, and arguably, like, it's not the best book in the series. It's the first book, but it's not the best book. Um, I think there are better ones in the series, but... And I just, I kept, like, while I was reading it, I kept asking myself, like, what did I, what did I see in this that was so great? I don't know. I just don't know, but yeah, so this one definitely, my, my thoughts definitely changed on this one. Okay, so this person asked, do you have a reading routine as in a preferred time of day to read or is it just as and when you can fit it around your family? No, I, I definitely have preferred times of day. Uh, I'm one of those people right when I wake up in the morning, I like to read, um, especially in this house. <laughs> if I get up early enough, uh, the house is quiet and I can just read in silence or I'll put on like an ASMR uh, I like to start my day off by reading. Um, so like I'll make my cup of coffee and sit down, do my Wordle for the day. If anybody of you, anybody out there still does Wordle, 
I do Wordle. I do my Wordle and then I read. And then I will also read in the middle of the day, like once I take Hunter to preschool, I have like like two hours in the middle of the day uh, when, you know, no kids are here. And so I will read then. And then I like to read before bed, but I usually don't last very long reading in bed. I end up falling asleep. So yeah, definitely like my favorite time of day to read is like first thing in the morning. Okay, this person asked if I had any middle grade recommendations. I sure do. Uh, first up, these first two were from kind of my childhood that I really enjoyed. And the one I have reread recently and I feel like it's still held up. If you want like creepy stuff, I would definitely say scary stories to tell in the dark. The, these stories were so fun to read, especially at like sleepovers and stuff. We would like read these out loud and scare the crap out of each other. It was a great time, great time. And then the other one from like when I was a kid, if you uh, want to read, <laughs> like a, it's an anthology sort of series um, that's kind of weird. It's actually pretty weird. Funny, different, just bizarre, but a good time is Sideways Stories from Wayside School. Now I have not reread this since I was a kid, so I don't really know if it holds up, but I just know that I had such great memories of reading this as a kid. There's a couple books in the series. I think this is the first one though. Um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. And then I actually asked my daughter, when I dropped one of my books, um, <laughs> since she is in first grade, so she's, you know, almost to like, I don't know what is technically middle grade. Is it starting at like age eight? Well, she's seven. And so I was like, hey, uh, what's a what's a book that you would want to recommend to people? And she said, Dog Man. She loves these books. They are um, like graphic novel type. Um, so they're, they're really easy to read. She really loves them. She's read the first two. I think she's reading the third one right now. And she swears by these. She says they're a good time. Okay, the next question is, how do you keep your children busy when you really wanna read? And I'm at the lucky stage in, in <laughs> my parenting where my son is four, my daughter is seven. And so they, a lot of times, will go off and play together. Like they'll, they'll go up in one of their bedrooms or down in the basement and they will start to play together and entertain each other, themselves, whatever. And so it's, I, and so I can kind of like, you know, I can like pick up a book and be like, okay, you know, while well, they go off and do their thing. So, um, but when they were little, it was mostly like, if they were napping or whatever, um, that's when I would read a lot. Uh, and I, but I also wanted to read in front of them a lot. And so they, cause now they kind of associate that with me. They know I'm a book lover and they, I think are becoming book lovers because they saw me even like standing at the stove stirring soup, you know, I'm, I'm sitting there with a book in my, in my face. So um, yeah, I think uh, you just kind of squeeze it in when you can, when you're a parent. You just, you just do the best you can. Okay, the next question is, what book do you think was a favorite five years ago that you still think is a favorite now? Uh, five years ago, so when I first started my channel, um, one of the very, it was in like, I think the first wrap up I ever did. I read Jane Eyre for the first time by Charlotte Bronte and I said in that video, I think this is like one of my new favorite classics and I think that still holds up. I haven't reread it since then, but I really want to because I did really enjoy this read. I thought it was great. It had everything that I love in like classic literature. Uh, and so yeah, five years later, I still think that this is a great book. What is your favorite Stephen King book today? Today. Okay, this person asked, what's one thing that you would like to do this summer? Uh, well, okay, vacation-wise, I really wanna go back up to the UP, or Upper Peninsula, for those, those of you that don't live in Michigan. We just call it the UP. Uh, we did that last summer. We went to my dad's hometown for the 4th of July and had a blast, and we wanna go back. We're gonna go back and do that again this year because we had such a good time, and I just loved experiencing that with my family because that was what we did growing up as kids and so it was such a like a nostalgic thing and it was just, it was just really cool to see my kids enjoying the same things that I did at that age in the same place and all of that it was just it was great okay the next question is would you change anything about your booktube experience thus far no I don't think so I think it's gone very well and I'm pretty happy with it. Like other than, like I said, uh, I think I would have liked to have done the booktube newbie tag right in the beginning. Um, but other than that, it's it's going great. I have no complaints. 
She also asked, can you recommend a good vacation read? And I think I could, let me go grab them. All right, so I have kind of two options for you. If you're looking for something that's like, the people in the book are on a vacation and it goes horribly wrong and it's really weird and creepy, read The Ruins by Scott Smith. You will not be disappointed. But if you're looking for something a little more maybe lighthearted, something easy to read when you're kind of like, traveling or like on the beach or sitting in a park or I don't know, whatever you're doing. I would recommend How Not to Die Alone by Richard Roper. It's got some funny bits. It has some awkward bits. Uh, it was a good time and something that I think you could enjoy on a vacation. Okay, this person asked, um, what is a book that you loved when you first read it, but due to a reread, my opinion changed. I answered that. Interview with the Vampire for sure. Okay, top three and bottom three Stephen King books. Here we go. Number one, shocker. Yes, today anyway, because these two interchange. Number one and number two kind of interchange. So number two, but sometimes it's number one, <laughs> is The Sand. Uh, both very chunky, very chunky, but great. And I actually reread this book last year and loved it just as much. So this held up for sure. And then my number three kind of changes Again, today, I'm gonna say Needful Things. This book needs more love. A lot of people, when they talk about like, great Stephen King books, this one doesn't come up very much, and I think it should, because it's great. Um, it's dark, it's kind of funny, it's kind of, uh, if you like, like, small town, kind of, like, nitpickety, nit like, drama, nitpicking each other. There is a, a scene in this book that disturbed me so much, I I still, like, it still just ugh, haunts me. Like, oh my gosh, it was just, it was crazy. And yeah, this book was a lot of fun. But like I said, it's also dark, sometimes graphically violent, but it's a good time. Bottom three, I don't have any of these because I don't really want them on my shelves because I didn't enjoy them. And the first one is Firestarter. I don't know why, I read Firestarter and I was just like, Okay, and then I would say number two is probably The Dead Zone because the concept was cool, uh, but it had a lot of political stuff in it and I did not care about that at all. And then the third one is, uh, I'm gonna go with Christine. A book, a, like a very like too long book, honestly, about a haunted car. I went into it thinking, I don't think I'm gonna like this very much. I don't really care about cars and a haunted car just sounds kind of silly to me. And yeah, that's pretty much how it went for me. I didn't really like it that much. I will never reread that one, that's for sure. Okay, what or who inspired you to start your channel? Um, I watched other people do booktube videos and eventually, it took me quite a few years, but I eventually was like, you know what, I wanna do that and I'm gonna do that. One of the first booktubers I ever watched was um, the readables and she hasn't made videos in a long time like years but i used to watch her videos and i thought they were so great and so fun um and then yeah i just kind of like went from there so uh definitely she was probably though the first one that i watched and thought oh this is something maybe i could do okay who is one of your favorite authors obviously stephen king he's been brought up quite a bit in this q a i also love joe hill he hasn't written a book that i haven't liked so that's good. <laughs> um, Michael McDowell, who I think I've mentioned, he's one that I want to read all of his stuff now. Um, I have a few more of his books to read, but his stuff is great also. Again, he's one I've never been disappointed by. Is there a genre you used to hate and now love or vice versa? No, I don't think so. Um, there's definitely genres that I didn't read as much when I, before booktube, that I read more of now and enjoy, like um, historical fiction. I didn't read a ton of historical fiction before booktube, but now I do read it and I do really enjoy it. Um, I've read a couple of fantasies, a little, like a dapple, just a little bit, and I'm still not sure. I'm not sure. It depends on the fantasy. <laughs> if it's like super, super complex, they lose me. So it all depends. What is your favorite book ever? I honestly, <laughs> I cannot answer that question. <laughs> it's just too hard. Favorite genre? Horror. Who is your favorite booktuber that you watch? 
there's so many because so many of them are my friends. Um, so like I love Bobby at Bobby Reads. Uh, she's a riot. She really is. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love Sarah from Sarah's Nightstand, Lindsay from Lindsay's Little Library, I love Carol from Carol Marie Reads, um, obviously I like the, some of the bigger ones, like I love Books and Lala, like she's so creative and goals, just goals. Um, I also really like Kaylin Abridged, her vibe, uh, her vlogs specifically are great. Um, there's just so many, I can't narrow it down to one. If you could become a character in a book, which one would you choose? I'm going to say I would become Alice and go to Wonderland because it would be crazy. It would be odd. It's, it's sometimes very um, frustrating, but I think it would be fun. What is my favorite place to read? Um, I'm not sitting in there right now because my husband <laughs> was actually out front in our front yard doing lawn, like lawn work and making a lot of noise, so I came up here to our room to film. But my, my home library is my favorite place. Uh, my chair is right by the window, so I can kind of like look out the window periodically. My chair is very comfortable, which is important. And I just like to be surrounded by my books. I like to be able to sometimes just sit and just kind of like look eh, around at my books. That, that brings me joy. All-time favorite book. I can't do it, guys. It's too hard. <laughs> what genre have you tried because of booktube that you normally would have never tried? Uh, I would say, like I said, historical fiction was one I wasn't really big on. Um, and also, like I said, a little bit of fantasy. Bobby is slowly getting me to read more fantasy. Like we read Kings of the Wild last year for our book club, and I actually really liked that book. It was good. Um, so that one I'm, I'm still I'm still thinking about. And then the last question, do you have any collectible first editions or um, being such an avid reader, are you interested in rare books? And honestly, like I'm not. Um, I think there are definitely editions of books that I would like to get my hands on. Uh, ones that I prefer in terms of like hardback, paperback, or the, the look of the cover or whatever. But other than that, I don't really, it doesn't like, I don't seek out like signed books or like anything like that. Um, it's just kind of whatever I can pick up, I pick up. Though I do like to try, especially like in series and stuff, keeping them all the same. Um, but other than that, yeah, it's not really, I'm not really huge on that. All right, so now to announce the giveaway winner. So this person uh, wins a $25 gift card to Book Depository. And what I did was I counted how many questions I had or how many people um, asked questions and I put that number, which was 43, into a number generator. And it picked a number for me and I counted and saw who that was and they were the winner. So that's how I determined who won. And the winner was Laura R. So uh, Laura, if you can, uh, email me your address and your pick for your book depository item or items up to $25. And I'll also comment on your comments so that you know that you won. So yeah, congratulations. Thank you so much for asking a question and I hope you enjoy your gift. Okay, guys, we did it. We made it through the Q&A. Woo! <laughs> um, yeah, that was a long one. Um, thank you for sticking around if you're still here. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I appreciate it. And I hope that you enjoyed my answers and that you got to know me a little better, especially if you're newer here and, you, you know, you wanted to know more about me. I hope that this video helped you. And thank you guys so much for helping me celebrate my fifth birthday. Uh, yeah, so, um, okay, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I will talk with you soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.